Okay. That's the quick and dirty. All right, so we have these two objects set up in our scene, and they've been duplicated and separated from the original uh, cat nano objects. So those are hidden. We have this random groups. We can delete that. Here's our plane. And then we'll just call this green. And all. And then red. And all. OK. So what we're going to do is now set up the shading. So the hyper shade sort of surface shader and the ambient occlusion shader. And we'll set up. Um, and we'll do some render passes and hopefully get a configuration where we'll actually save a composited layered PSD file. Okay, so the first thing to do, I think, is create render layers. So we open the channel box editor down here under render layers. We have the default master layer, which we'll get if we just um, if we just render right now, so if I just click render, you know, we, we see this. Oh yeah, we forgot to turn on the, the frame for the camera. So where was that? Camera settings, film gate. gate. Yeah. So that's what I'd like to see where the edge of the, the frame is going to be. Sorry, I'm fighting with the mouse. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to do two layers, and we want all of our objects that are going to be rendered in those layers, so we can pre-select them, and then click this button, and you can see now they're all in the layer. So if we only just create a layer without doing that, so we're going to do a surface shader, and then we're going to do ambient occlusion, ambient occlusion layer. So you have to select them, won't you? Yeah, so if I didn't select them, you can see it's just empty. And you know what I can do is either go back here and select it, or I could even just go into the outliner and select these guys, and now I'll just say add selected objects. So if you create more stuff later or you accidentally miss something, you could always just add it to that layer. So now we have two layers, ambient inclusion, surface shader. They're just names right now. They don't actually correspond to anything that's going on. And so now what we need to do is create our surface shaders. Um, what, let's go ahead and open the hypershade window, which I'll bring back over here. I don't know why it defaults to sizing like this. So these are all the default. Um, Strand color is already created by Cat Nano. So what we're going to have to do is create our own um, surface shaders that are going to correspond to the two layers. So we can do just the colors first. I think that's a bit simpler. And then we'll do the ambient inclusion version. So let's just do this, the surface shader one first. So that's just right here. Right now, everything is shown, but you, know, you can reduce these by selecting a subset. So these are filters. This is going to be a software render, so this surface shader. So there's a few things that we can do. Um, let's do. Actually, I want to I want to create one more bit of geometry. So let's duplicate this this green guy and maybe rotate him a bit this apparently I dragged him not like I wanted to drag it <laughs> uh, okay is that it's keeping him on the same plane okay so I wanted to <laughs> I'm in a little bit of trouble with this guy so we have a second green bundle. We'll call this uh, orange bundle. OK. 
Okay. So orange is just going to get a solid color. And that's, that's where we're going to do our surface shader. And then I actually want to repurpose some of the existing shaders just so we can preserve um, this kind of color relationships here. So, so this is just creating a new one from scratch. We, uh, let me size this so maybe we can, we can see a little bit more of what's going on. Uh, maybe like this. I guess that's not going to help. Okay, so I just want to kind of have, have this a bit visible. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a surface shader and then I'm going to have to turn on this. We're going to, now we have it selected, we can change its output color and since we're trying to make something that's orange, we can go like this. And now, since we can select this object here, orange bundle, the whole, whole thing, assign material to selection, now the whole thing is going to be orange. Okay, so that's one thing, way to do it. And then what I also wanted to do is just take these existing shaders, and there's a few different ways we can select them. So we can select this guy and say, okay, let's let's see if this is actually the relevant shader by selecting objects with material, and we see that indeed those are selected. So what I want to do is go in here and actually just change the type of this shader from a Lambert to a surface shader. So we can slow down. So this just becomes a solid surface shader. Now I wanted to retain the same color, which I lost just now, which is kind of annoying. So I'm going to undo that go in here, take this color, and then save it, um, save it here. I think we can, I think that's supposed to, that's supposed to save in one of these boxes. Is that possible? Swap it real quick. Yeah. Okay, I think this is recent colors, so um, done. I think that just got added there. <laughs> I tricked it by changing the <laughs> setting and then changing it back, and that's that's one of the colors. Okay, so now when I change this to a surface shader, you see all the colors go there, and then now I can just get that color back here. And now you can see there's no, the Lambert shader includes some shadows and then this, this has none. So it's just a very, it's just a uniform color. And then I want to do the same thing with the red. So again, this is just like a little trick. Let me just do like one, point eight, done. <laughs> you don't go there, do you? Well, it's not going to show up yet. But I think it'll show up now. Oh yeah. Okay. And then finally, I think it's this green color. So select objects with material. Yep. Um, color. And then this is point seven three three. Okay, it's in our memory now. Surface shader. And then we get that color back. Okay. So now we have a few surface shaders that I'm happy with. And apparently it just <laughs> it doesn't actually change the type, it just creates a new one and deletes the old one. That's kind of but then the network connections I guess are retained, so that everything that used to have that shader now just gets assigned the new one. Okay, so now we have these guys set up, and we're actually ready to do the rendering. But we're we're basically ready. I want to move the window. Okay, so I think. We